Hello, Year 4 at John Hunt. How are you? To the last week of lockdown learning. So whether you've been learning or whether you've been at school, of course, next week, everybody can be back together and I'll be back in school again. So when you see me in school, give me a wave. I can't wait. Can't wait to get back to some sort of normality. But I'm hoping that you've been really enjoying this music sessions I've been providing for you on YouTube and that kind of it's given you a bit of an escape, bit of a chance to explore something creative whilst we've been learning in a slightly different way. So let's, I'm going to use this session to kind of do a lot of recapping to make sure that we can kind of make sure that all that learning is stored away safely up there, um, whilst also trying to give you something to extend and challenge you a little bit, certainly with some of the rhythms that we're going to do together at the end of the session. So I first of all want to start by giving you kind of a, almost a little quiz just to begin to think about how much of that information have you got locked away up there in terms of notation, the rhythms that we've been reading and thinking about how long or how short those notes are. So we talk about that duration of those beats. So, for example, we've been using this beat, our minim beat, and that lasts for two counts. My minimum. So if I've got my four beat structure, that one, two, three, four. If I was just clapping my minims, two, three, four, one, two, three, four. You can join in with me. Three, four, one, two, three, four, four, three, two, one, stop. Okay. So if we've had our minimum, what notes have I got repeated here? If you remember, these were my, this was my pulse, my constant beat. They were my, what do we call them? And how long are they worth? They are, of course, my crotchet beats, my crotchet beats, and they're worth one beat, one beat each. So again, the count of four in my common time, one, two, three, four, it's sound one, two, three, four, one, two, three. Four, one, two, three, four, one, two, three, four, four, three, two, one, stop. Okay, I'm going to pick another card where we've got another count. So these notes we were, in fact, we've recognised them not just in pairs as we have, but we also know that sometimes they can come on their own in singular and the tail will hang down. These were my. Well, they're my half beats, aren't they? They're my half beats, and we recognise those as quaver, quaver notes. So again, if I've got my four beats, how would that sound? And think about saying that as well. So one, two, three, four, one and two and three and four and one and two and four and one and two and three and four, three, two, one and stop. OK, and there is another beat, actually, that I'm just going to very quickly introduce, because certainly when we look at our rhythms towards the end of the session, there's another note as well. Because, of course, we can extend. In fact, the minimum isn't our longest note. We can extend that duration, make it longer. And equally, we can keep cutting those notes down and shortening them in length. So I might. So if you think so far, we've had our minimum. If we were to divide our minimum into two equal beats, we'd have crotchets. So we'd have two crotchet beats would equal the same as this. If I was to split my crotchet beat into two equal notes, I'd have my quaver pairs. And then if I was to divide that again, we end up with our what we call our semi-quavers. Our semi-quavers. And you can see they look a little like quavers in that they've got that joining tail. And again, they can ha ha be singular. They can be on their own. And again, their tails would hang down, but they have two, two tails. So we've got our semi-quavers too. And they're, they're what we describe as our quarter beats. So I thought we'd just have a little practice as to how we would say, how we would count those beats if they were together. Now, it's a bit more of a mouthful. It's not quite a tongue twister, but we're certainly going to need to slow that tempo, tempo down. So, of course, if I had my semi-quavers, 
This is as a, how a musician would count those. It'd be one E and A, two E and A, three E and A, four E and A. Now, if I'm counting it that speed, that's my pulse. That one E and A, two E and A, three E and A, four E and A. Should we take it as a little slower first of all? So let's go one E and A, two E and A, three E and A. E. That's a very slow tempo. And A, 2 E, and A, 3 E, and A, 4 E, and A, 1 and A, 2 E, and A, 3 and A, 4 E, and 4, 3, 2, 1, stop. So my semi quavers, too. In fact, we can make them even quicker, and then we call them demi semi quavers. And it continues. So a bit like when you've looked at your maths and you've thought, of, thought about fraction amounts and dividing um, amounts into smaller parts. Same principle applies. In fact, there's lots of connections with music and maths. Lots and lots of connections. All about building those inte intellectual skills. You see, it's not just about being creative and well coordinated. It's also about developing that intelligence. All of these things you've been doing without realising. So um, I want to just kind of combine that knowledge. Hopefully it's, that's just given us a chance to consolidate as well as extend a little bit thinking about reading notation and recognising different notation. I'm going to reach to my keyboard because I want you to be a little bit creative today. Often when I start the session and we do some warm ups, I give you a rhythm and you copy it back or I give you a, a drumming combo and you replicate that. Today, I want you to think about that different um, knowledge and also combine in our things like our drum strokes and drum technique. Um, to create some of your own rhythms. So you might be working, have a drum available, and if you do, obviously get that ready. You might be just using body percussion. Whatever works, it's been the way all the way through, hasn't it? This is gonna be our beat. I don't wanna go too quick. Okay, so if we've got that as a bit of a backing beat, can you connect with the pulse? Can you feel it? It's sitting there. In fact, if you're if you're without drum, I want you to get that beat, but I want you to use a different variety of timbres, so different types of sounds. So I might do one, two, three, four, one, two, three, four. If I've got a drum, I might be thinking about doing my bass. Keep it going. And four, three, two, one, and stop. Okay, I want you to pick out those quaver beats. So can you hear? I want you to count and produce sound on each of those quaver beats. Ready? And again, try and use different types of sounds or a different pattern at least. So it might be one and Change it slightly, didn't I? Three and four and two and two and four and four, three, two, one and stop. Okay, next challenge. I want you to create me a rhythm on the spot that uses a combination of those different duration beats. So you don't need to think of it too, too much. Obviously, you kind of recognise straight away if you've got sounds with a longer length and shorter. So, for example, without having to really think, have I got so many quavers in there? Have I got quavers? Have I got... Just, just listen to the sounds. So I might have something like... I can hear I've got different beats of different values. Really quick beats to start, some longer beats, and then some jumpy rhythms in there actually as well. So uh, I might have something like... Again, a rhythm that's combining beats of different values. I'm going to count you four in, and I want you to create your own rhythm on the spot. Like I say, don't think about it too long. One, two, three, four. 
and I hope we got to the end of those. So that four beat phrase. Again, let's have another go. So you're only creating a short rhythm that would fit in a four beat structure. You can count you four in again. Are you ready? One, two, three, four. Okay. In fact, I've already mentioned I created a jumpy rhythm, didn't I? So I created a jumpy rhythm. And can you remember last week we had um, our bossa nova? And our bossa nova was the first of our styles that gave us a jumpy rhythm because we had a dot next to one of our notes. Um, so the dots tell us there's going to be a bit more of a jumpy feel to that rhythm. So I might have something like... Or I might have... Um, Or I might have something like. I'm going to count you four in. Again, I want you to aim for a jumpy rhythm. You can get different types of timbres in there as well. Brilliant. You ready? One, two, three, four. Jumpy. And stop. How did you do? Let's have another go. One, two, three, four. Good. So there we go. There's a little extra kind of challenge. You creating, you what we call improvising. So that's where you create, but on the spot without too much thought. And obviously, now that you're quite competent at performing different rhythms, and you're getting even more confident at sort of combining different rhythms and different beats of different lengths, it's really important we kind of have that chance just to create whether it's a longer task or a short instant task. So improvising is a really good skill to keep connecting with, keep practicing with. So we have recapped certainly a few aspects of our percussive work that we've been exploring. Duration, different rhythms that we can create, things like drumming technique. Um, but what we also need to think about the different, the route that we've began to take, exploring different types of music. So if you remember, we had chance to explore country music and pop music. So I pulled those two, particularly because I really wanted to give us a chance to connect with rhythms where we were either connecting to crotchet beats or quaver beats. They were more simplistic patterns because, like I say, we were either on, on the beat or had those quaver patterns that we might add just to, to fill out the, the time better. But we started to begin to explore uh, more complex, more advanced rhythm patterns, music that's been inspired from Latin rhythms. So if you remember, we've we've looked so far at the samba and bossa nova. Bossa nova was last week. Um, and we said that the Latin music, so Latin music is music that comes from America, particularly um, recognised because of all the Spanish influences in, in America. Um, so Latin music kind of began around 1940s in America, and there's loads of different styles, bossa nova and samba being just two, but we're going to look at another couple today. So I've kind of put a tick next to those two. We're going to be looking at two different types, hip hop and funk. Now, these are the genres of music I'm sure you've kind of heard of before. Maybe didn't particularly connect them to kind of that Latin style, that Latin rhythm. But certainly their, their influence globally has been huge in terms of the music that we listen to. So lots of music that you will listen to, popular music, would be also classed, like I say, possibly as, as one of those genres of music. So we're going to be exploring those two. We're going to look at two genres today. Um, can you remember one of the main features that I said was quite typical of Latin music? It was a feature that really pushed us thinking about how we connect to rhythm. Because the rhythm often, the beats were often transferred from that strong place in our bars music to the weak. It was a word that began with S. We kind of looked at it in a couple of ways, but particularly we were thinking about that offbeat. So the word I, I'm trying to get you to fish for is syncopation. So syncopation is, as it says there, when that beat that was on a strong place in a bar suddenly gets shifted to the, the weaker place. 
So it could be that one and and three and four and. But of course, if we had that four beat structure of one, two, three, four, normally that one is the stronger, but it might be two, three, four, two, three, four. So syncopation, like I say, you can kind of look at it in different different respects but it's it's that shift and suddenly when we add some syncopation to our music the energy lifts in the music so hopefully that's something that you're going to spot certainly in these two styles of music too and it doesn't particularly depend on the tempo either that energy rises whether it's quite a fast tempo like our funk will be or our hip-hop which is a bit of a bit of a slower tempo well certainly the two backing tracks we're going to work with so we're going to start with oh, I'm going to need to move this drum with our funk our funk is definitely the easier of the two and when I show you this pattern you'll see why one thing I will say is I am going to keep presenting the patterns for you so you can see because that has been important throughout our music work but with the, the kind of the the sudden challenge with some of these rhythms particularly our hip hop uh, it might become easier kind of rather than to read to connect to the feel and that's once something that i said was really important if you remember when i was playing my guitar last week it's more about the feel as a musician when you've got a piece of music which is dominant with latin rhythms you kind of learn to feel the music rather than count it rigidly but the funk as you'll see it's simple to start off with. We've got one, two, in fact, actually three crotchet beats. So on beats one, two, and four, we've got our crotchet beats. But there on our third beat, we've got an interesting combination of notes. That's one semi-quaver on its own, followed by connected to a dotted quaver. And again, I've kind of tried to help support that thinking about the counting. So we've got the three E, of course, and E becomes quiet so that rhythm sounds one two, one two just clap with me two three one two one two three one two one two one two four three two one and stop should we think about putting either our combo or our, I've got a tickly nose, sorry. <laughs> it's going to aggravate me as I'm playing. Um, we could do our drumming combination, right, left, right, right, left, right, left, right, right, left, or our tone, bass, bass, tone, bass, tone, bass, bass, tone, bass, tone, bass, bass, tone. Keep going with that rhythm as I get my backing track ready for you. So we're going to do it a few times. I definitely want you to tune into the types of sounds. Obviously, kind of, I've explained a little bit about Latin music, but I've not particularly said features of funk music. Try and listen out for the instrumentation and think about what words you use to describe this sort of music. There's our beat. That's our pulse. So we go. Ready? One, two, three, four. Right, left, right, right, left, right, left. Keep going. Left, right, left, right, right, left, right, left, right, right, right. I'm going to come back 
Okay, one more time. So there we go, there's funk, the style. What sort of instruments did you recognise in there? I don't know about you, but I'm always tuned into listening to that bass sound. So it's a really funky, <laughs> funky style bass playing, bass line playing there. But there was a whole manner of different instruments. So we've got saxophones, we've got brass, there was keyboard even in there, strings, obviously percussion. So it's a very full sound, the funk uh, instrumentation. What about the, the style? How would you describe the music? So the tempo, be upbeat, it's quite energetic, lively, definitely got a feel good kind of vibe in there. I asked you at the beginning, did it remind you of a, of a song? Actually, I would have loved to have played it, but of course, following sort of copyright and everything else while I'm on YouTube. But if I'd have played um, Uptown Funk, Bruno Mars, definitely kind of, there's lots of comparison and similarities there. So certainly one that I'd encourage you to go and listen to and try that groove with it. Should we have a look at our next <laughs> our next groove? Now this one looks a little scarier, but actually I'm going to kind of introduce you to a different way of kind of maybe reading this and, it's, and another way that musicians will use. So this is, again, a short groove. It fits in our four beat structure. In fact, one thing I didn't point out when I put that last groove on, can you remember last week I introduced these symbols here? Can you remember what they were? They were my repeat signs, weren't they? So we know as when we're doing our grooves that we keep it on a loop, we keep repeating it. But I thought I'd, I'd just point that out again while we're kind of reflecting on every bit of learning that we've been doing. Now in this passage, you can see it's busier. There's lots more beats. We can see those notes because of those circular shapes. We can see we've got lots of quavers. We've also got some jumpy rhythms. We've got my dot. Now that's a dotted quaver joined with my semi-quaver. In fact, I've got another semi-quaver here, look, that's been created. But I've also got a semi-quaver rest and a quaver rest. So the rests kind of try and make the rhythms even more snappy, even more lively. So often when we talk about rhythms, we talk about the beats we can hear aloud, but actually the rests are really important too. They kind of add to the dynamic um, aspect of the of the music. Now, I had tried to be helpful, but I, as I was writing it, I think kind of my counting just got mixed with the, the tails in the end. So I've been putting that one E and A to kind of highlight, even when those semi-quavers aren't being used, how you would count this. But the sound of this one would be, if I've got the count of four, one, two, Three, four. Now, I could count it this way, but I think something that might help you just connect with that that little bit quicker would be another technique that us musicians sometimes use rather than to count that kind of. The, the, the numbers and symbols would be to think about attaching a particular phrase. So we're quite good at using like our blues or oranges beats that we can kind of recognise as to how long they're, they're, they're worth. 
in terms of this, you might attach a phrase like, and you, you can create one of your own. I might do something like, I like cheese very much, please. I like cheese very much, please. Now, as soon as we do that, as soon as we give it kind of that extra um, identification, it makes it a little easier for us to remember because kind of we can say that in our head. We can use that internal our internal skill while we're performing that rhythm. Just clap with me now. I like cheese very much, please. I like cheese very much, please. I like cheese very much, please. I like cheese very much. And four, three, two, one, stop. Now, if we think about that with our technique, so it's kind of, and I will use the drum, I think, this time, particularly with the track, so you can hear it above. It's that I like cheese. That bass, 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 I like cheese. Have you got it? Right, right, left, 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 right, left. If you're on your laps, that bass, bass, turn, 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 bass, turn, that right, right, left, 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 right, left. If you need to have a little pause of the video, do. They're not the easiest of, of uh, grooves to do. Like I say, there's quite a lot in there, but certainly a lot of style. Again, kind of think about how you describe this music. Oh, I'm losing my drum. So here we go. Hip hop. So much slower tempo. We will hear the beat. It's there. In terms of hearing that part, it would sound the track. Bits, bits, us to the end of our session we've had chance not only to kind of very quickly consolidate so make sure that hopefully all the different knowledge skills understanding that we've been focusing on over the last few weeks is, is firmly embedded up there <laughs> uh, we've also had chance to look at two new latin rhythms and like i say not the easiest but certainly ones full of kind of style and flavor so I hope you've been enjoying my sessions. I hope that you have a great week back next week, your first week back being alongside all your friends uh, and back at school together. When, Like I say, when you see me in school, give me a wave. Um, thank you very much for joining me. <laughs> Take care. Stay safe.